Hello everybody, welcome back, I'm Ursa Ryan. We've got Lotaro with the Mapushi today, and this is a TSL Earth map, but before I get into the details of it, we have some very exciting changes I'm bringing to you this game. I'm trying out a few new mods, now this should be really, really interesting. Oh, it's a 50 player map, by the way, we've got all of the civs in the game on this TSL Earth map. It is the Yet Not Another Maps pack mod that's giving me the map if you ever want to try this. I keep all of this information on Discord. Oh, that is a good point. I see lots of people commenting all the time. Oh, Ryan, uh, so Ryan, what mods do you use? Well, I have a full list on Discord. Yes, I deliberately keep it on Discord and I deliberately don't show you all of this all the time because I want you on Discord. Ha <laughs> ha It's a clever ploy. Yeah, you're just gonna have to expand. Just, you're just gonna have to, you know, understand and, and live with that one. Religion Expanded we're trying out today. Now this introduces the religion religions per game to 16 as opposed to 8 which is quite fun it has 40 new beliefs and it has a bunch more pantheons that get added as well I'm hoping this should help to stop the pantheon bug we have a little bit where on these bigger games all the pantheons run out and you have this horribly buggy thing where you have to like force end turn every time because you can't pick a pantheon I'm hoping that will disappear I also have Tota or Tomatex Tomatech, yeah, no, that, that sounds about right. Historical religions, oh god. Um, this adds a bunch of historical religions to the game, and you will see this is really, really good fun. I'm also playing with Loyal Capitals today. Those are the mods that uh, you'll need to use if you want to play this particular map. I've left the seed and the actual map file in my Discord, so come and grab them. But, as you can see, it is a 50-player game. This is pretty full, and it is turn 136. I am starting slightly further into the game than I usually do. I'm starting on a medieval era start. I love a medieval era start. If you've never tried this before, it's really worth it. Like, it's really, really good fun. Especially when you combine it with Mapoche, who, I mean, their start is hilarious. There is the Torre. Oh, it's so good. It is such a good thing. I also, I mean, they have a little bit of a glitchy start. This is a geothermal fissure, but it's also a mountain which means you can't settle on it, which is a bit annoying. Uh, you'll just have to kind of just believe it's there. Um, and you can see, actually, I've got no fresh water in these starts either as well. Um, you are packed in, Esma Pouche. You really are. Um, what modes are we playing with today? It is Heroes and Legends, Monopolies and Corporations, Secret Societies. I don't know what sort of victory we're going to go for today. We're kind of just going to play this one out as we go. But, I mean, there are some amazing yields around the Torre, so I'm tempted to settle next to it in order to sort of whip this out here, but then actually if I settle next to the, this is a volcano star, I'm, I'm always reluctant to settle right next to volcanoes, but this I guess allows me for more tiles up in, in this direction. It's, oh, it's difficult to know where to go actually on this one. Now the last time we played Lataro, they had not been updated, these guys got updated in the big old patch where, you know, more Obviously, Canada and the Camans and Spain got their big buffs. So Tara also got quite a decent change around. The 10% or plus 10 combat strength when fighting heroic and golden age civs is still there, but you also get it against three cities now. Um, the pillaging loyalty bonus is gone, but now you get 20 loyalty penalty uh, to the enemy if you kill a unit in their borders, and that is 40 loyalty if the enemy is in a golden age. That is hilariously strong. You've also increased the Tukwai ability, which is plus 5 culture and plus 5 production in any city with a governor, and you also get 10% experience in combat um, for units trained in the city. That's awesome, but those numbers are then tripled if your governors are outside of any city that you founded. So Mapushi really does need to conquer people. And it means that we're going to have to keep an eye with these guys. Keep an eye on the cities we found. I need to remember which cities I found so that I don't end up putting governors in them. So we're going to be naming them according. Malon Raiders have just been brilliant. And then the Chemamul. I think that's right. Chemamul? <laughs> so, oh no. Uh, production and culture, but only... Um, when you put them on breathtaking tiles. They're, they're pretty damn good, actually. Yeah, this is going to be a really, really cool start. But because we're starting in the medieval era, we're going to be able to jump straight in. And we also start with five governors and the Hermetic Order. And you know what? We're going to go for it. I have no idea how many ley lines are on this map. I have no idea if it's worth it. But I am going to go for it. And we are just going to join the Hermetic Order. Now... There are no ley lines in this immediate area, but that's fine. There may be some, you know, we'll have to go and find them. 
And I'm going to go with my hunch here and I'm going to settle next to the Tauri because it should give me some of the yields around it on that second tile ring. So we'll see if this works for me. I mean, I'm hoping it does. We've got a ton of era score to start the game with. Plus three, plus three, plus one. That's having a new... Well, we're the first to see the Torres, and then we've also settled next to it. So that's awesome. We have no food in my capital at all. Um, that's slightly worrying, but it's only minus one. That's okay. It means we can go and, you know, there we go. That's, that's already neutralized. That's already awesome. Um, the scout is going to make its way up north. There is a ley line already. So that is awesome. We already have at least one ley line. That's cool. I'm going to send the spearmen down south. Um, the settler, well, there's a there's a ley line in this direction, but I might just sort of go across the lake here and just see what happens. See if we can go and settle here. Depends on how neat Brazil are. And there are two ley lines here now. That's that's pretty damn cool. But I want to get involved in the religion game today because I've <laughs> put two religion mods on, so we better. So revelation. I'm going to get some great profit points from the beginning. That should be really, really cool. I also want to get a bit of faith per turn really quickly as well, so that I can build on that one. Speaking of, builders and urban planning are both very useful things, and we'll go for um, Diplomatic League as well. So that's profit points in. That should give me lots and lots of chance. There'll be a lot more great profits in this game than there were before. Um, 120 points needed because they're medieval era ones, so we're going to have to work on this, make sure we get this pretty nicely and that already I guess it uses a lot of my early game gold I appreciate but that gives me a plus three holy sight on a desert tile which would have been useless otherwise so that's pretty cool otherwise it's always a good chance to go for a pingala start let's get him in immediately and give him all the good stuff how many we've got three left so good one two three now Mapuche eventually will mean that we've got to get lots of different governors and spread them out but I like to just have a nicely put in Pingala, especially because that's going to be double great person points. We'll be able to work uh, and get towards that first religion as quick as we can. Oh my god, there's another one here. This coast is amazing. Great. Well, there we go. That That's going to be awesome. Brazil. We're going to have every single South American sieve on this map. So Brazil, you can already see the Incans. I think Gran Colombia will be here as well. The Mayans, the Aztecs, they're all going to be nicely put out. Um, I actually think I was going to settle on the coast in order to be able to build boots on the other side of South America. But I'm actually going to settle a little closer to Brazil, just because it means that I can nab some of these tiles between us. So I quite like the idea of that. And Gaiu there is Pachacuti. Hello, my friend. Right, now, this is the thing. Are we going to try and just sort of pretend to be friends with them beginning of the game? It's unlikely we're going to get away with that one, so... Maybe not. Maybe we'll just have to we'll have to just go with what we've got for now. Mass production, that's nice. And I think I can now afford there we go. I don't normally buy tiles at the beginning of the game, but the production on these tiles is pretty nuts. That'll help me to get my holy site done quickly. I'm the only person with the revelation card. That's quite fun. Get this trade route done. Actually, that's a nice road being built there. That'll actually help my troop movements quite considerably. Oh, I should also point out that we have barbarians turned off on this map. There will be no barbarians. Why? Quite frankly, it stops my computers melting on the bigger maps. There's there's very little other reason than that. First holy site complete. There we go. That'll be another two great profit points per turn because Pingala is doubling them. Let's get the shrine in quickly. That'll be another two. So that'll be six points coming in. And then we need to think about the second district that my capital can do. Maybe an encampment, actually. I'm just, like over here somewhere that I can use to spawn troops in. That would be pretty cool. I mean, we could just go... I mean, a horseman rush is, is not a bad idea. I've got a lot of horses. Or oh, actually, we can go castles uh, and go for a courser rush. Yeah, 46 strength. Try and time that in with the first golden age of Brazil and we could just charge in. It's not a bad idea. Void singers and diplomatic favor. Oh, yeah. Brazil are definitely keeping some spearmen outside of my lands here enjoying that one like i feel like that's a little bit threatening brazil <laughs> just just a touch so an encampment over here would be pretty cool but should we just i'm just going to quickly build a couple of troops like a horseman in three turns it, it, it feels like a good idea but spearmen are unfortunately quite good against horsemen so maybe i should be building something different uh da, 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 da. I don't know what to do. Perfect. First horse units built. That just means that my city is just a little bit stronger than it was. Not a huge amount, but just a little bit. Um, 
Oh, what am I going to do in my capital now? You can see I'm well on my way to getting that first religion. 11 turns away, 6.9 profit points. I don't need to really rush up the holy site prayer. Um, I think working all of these tiles and making sure they're improved has got to be an important thing. So let's get a builder done quickly. I can build lumber mill uh, and two fish boats and then I can build some builders to send over here. So actually let's get two builders and then I'll think about getting my next district after that point. I do have a little bit of starting army. One archer, one spearman and one horseman. It's enough to stop me from being swamped I think. Hey Coupe, how you doing? Where have you come from? Oh yes, over, over the sea. There's always a threat of coupe on this map, just sort of appearing from nowhere, but we'll, um, we'll forgive him for now. It's Grand so Columbia. Cool. Well, I think we've met everyone now. That's everyone. I've been buying diplomatic favor from people at the beginning of the game, and Grand Columbia will buy it for 9 gold and 200 up front. That bankrolls me. Nice. It's a little bit worrying that I've got to 71 faith, and I still haven't found my first, um, uh, what do you call it? Pantheon. So... I mean, even if I do get a religion right now, I can't actually put the damn thing down. That is a little concerning, I won't lie. Oh, this geothermal fissure is actually a volcano, I think. I mean, unless it's just some sort of weird... Yeah, I think this is, this is a volcano. <laughs> okay, so that the graphical glitch there is a little bit bad, but yeah, my capital actually is in a volcano area. Oh, lovely. That's great. I'm glad that we just noticed that one. That's, that's really, really good. I went in the end for a harbour. I think getting some boats is going to be a good idea. Um, uh, I mean, the Incans have two cities on the coast and the Incans are remarkably difficult to attack because of all their hills and mountains and things. So it's got to be a good idea. Yeah, there we go. There is the first Bernie Burn. But no population loss, luckily. Just destroyed things. But I do have this. A seven production two food lumber mill tile. Yes. Oh, cheese pantheon. Thank goodness. I was really... Really worried we weren't going to get anything from that. Right, okay, we've got a few new options available to us. So some we know, like and a lot of these are, are very similar, but some we don't. Goddess of the Festivals is now food rather than plantations. Uh, sorry, cultures for plantations. Um, what else have we got? Uh, this is all good. Fire Goddess, I think, is very primordial waters. This is a new one. Two amenities and two housing from holy sites adjacent to a coast or lake town. Now, this is good because I already have two holy sites, either next to a lake or a coast. So that could accidentally work really well. Um, culture from camps, culture from quarries, god of met metallurgy, which is plus one science from mines over luxury and bonus sources. I mean, that's pretty cool. Plus one food and plus one production from farms over bonus resources. I mean, that's that would be awesome on a certain type of star. I don't really have too many of those. There's a couple of farms, but not huge. Um, and then plus one culture. I'm going to go for this primordial waters, amenities and housing from holy sites adjacent to coast or lake tiles. That sounds great. And actually, that means we've got plus seven amenities and plus three amenities in my capital and second city accordingly. That's that's awesome. Just going to build an encampment just here. Just to stop Brazil from feeling like they can just waltz in and I'll get ancient walls after that point. I feel that's a good, good pickup for me there. Jenny the Mayans, they are on Central America. I'm starting to just crawl up here now. Perfect. I've got a fantastic harbor district now. So let's get the lighthouse sorted. That'll give me a little bit more food and all of these boats out to sea. There it is. The first holy prophet. Right. He actually wants it to put in this city rather than my capital, which I'm, you know, I'm all about. That's, that sounds great. Let's see what options we've got. Um, by the way, there are going to be quite a few options here. Oh my word. Oh, ho, ho. So I think a lot of them are preset names uh, and are all to do with actual religions historically that have happened. But once we get to the goat, now, these are the ones that we can name ourselves. So let's have a look and see if we've got any more options that we like. So obviously there's a sort of little ram or like a goat or a, I think that's a ram, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that is. That's the goat. Right. OK, well, there we go. Um, we've got the bow, got the lion again, the fish we recognize. Oh, there's a beautiful beetle, the flame. That is definitely a pentagram. <laughs> oh, exciting. Um, oh, it's, it's, too much, it's too much to ask for a bear, isn't it? I'm pretty sure there's not going to be a bear. Nope, there's going to be no bear. Never mind. So we'll go for something else that's quite cool. Oh, the sword is nice. I like the look of the sword. The flame is quite cool as well. Oh, and I love the dragon. Oh, and it's also Mapoche blue. Oh, okay, we've got to go for the dragon. Call it the flaming Ursa dragon. Yeah, right. Okay, there's a few more um, religion beliefs that we can pick now. Now, Feed the World is still a thing. 
housing and food from shrines and temples. You know I love it. But we'll have a look at the new ones. Worship of Wealth, plus it gold from World Wonders. That's quite cool. Um, commercial Hub, Entertainment Complex and Water Park Buildings with Faith. This Prosperity Doctrine, that's kind of like... Um, uh, the Jesuit education, isn't it? But in a different sort of form. Culture and faith from religious arts, sculptures, portraits, landscapes. Oh, that's quite fun. We purchase industrial zone building and harbour buildings with faith. Works righteousness. Now that is awesome. That's really cool, actually, thinking about it. I mean, in theory, this is a map with heroes, so maybe we don't want to do this. Fervent spirit. Um... Okay, uh, movement to builders and settlers trained in cities following this religion. That's awesome. Amenities and housing in cities of the world wonder. I mean, that's pretty cool as well. Shrines and temples provide science equal to their intrinsic output. That's that's the, like the culture equivalent, isn't it? Fruits of labor, work ethic. Okay, there's, there are some amazing buildings here. Absolutely amazing ones. Ugh. And I'm going to annoy everybody by just going for Feed the World because I love it. But it's only because there's a huge production base on the tiles around my empire. I need to work as many of those tiles as possible. So the extra housing and food stacks really well with my amenities that I'm getting from my pantheon. However, we'll go for a, a slightly cooler building or something like that. I mean, Crusade is still there, but there are other options. Sacral Architecture, plus 50% production towards holy sites and their buildings. I love that. That stacks so well with Feed the World. That's what we're going to do for now. Perfect. No no crusading, but we can always improve it later. Yeah, there comes Brazil. That was a surprise to absolutely nobody, but um, there we go. What we're going to do is we're going to see if we can just lure as many people into this war as possible. Brazil thinks it can push me around. It probably can, to an extent, um, but I'm going to sort of put my foot down as much as I can. Right, who knows who Brazil are? Quite a few people, actually. So... Let's just dig in with my friendships and then we're going to just get other people to join this war where we can. 120 gold to get the Incans in. I think that's worth it personally. Okay, they're the only people that want to at the moment, but that is their immediate neighbor. So that will help a lot. Um, they do have a man at arms, which is a little bit scarier, but that's okay. We can just hold fire for now. We've got the wars coming up in that city and we're going to, now we've got the lighthouse sorted. Um, I'm just going to build a couple of troops to come over to the front line and help out where I can. Like an archer. Spam is probably going to be quite a good thing. And then we can sort of go for machinery after that point. I'm going to get limes up as well just to help to push that wall up as quickly as possible. Okay, the Brazil were on good terms with everybody, which is why I think nobody wanted to join in on that war. So I'm just waiting for them to be denounced by people for declaring that war. Yeah, they will have suffered diplomatically from that. Right, they're going to just send one troop at a time round on me. I will take that, quite frankly. And they've left it badly. They've only got about 15 turns here before I can, uh, you know, actually get the combat bonus from them being in a golden age. The AI always goes into a golden age, that first age. It's just, it's just a thing. Hello, Aztecs. Oh dear, everything's erupting around me at the moment, which is not helpful. Not helpful at all. I am right now trying to survive and watching everything be destroyed is quite frankly just disturbing um i'm gonna have to just get in this builder just to come and fix everything on this side and this builder is gonna have his work cut out fixing things on the other side but i think for now this is okay now have this the pike and shot might have left themselves open a little bit here oh i didn't get the kill that is unfortunate never mind oh what are you doing this is a appalling troop placement appalling there you go got two kills there that's um that was shocking um the spearman i think can survive an attack from that unit but we'll just we'll just hang in there for now if i can what congress time let's go for ranged see if i can get that and i love the idea of flaming ursa dragon getting some extra points we'll see if that works i mean who knows what other people are going to be voting for yay flaming ursa dragon and anti-cavalry got more strength nice Actually, that is that is basically my unit, my, my, my one spearman. So cool, that'll, that'll do. Teddy, you don't like this war with Brazil, do you? You'll come to my aid, probably. No, no one, nobody wants to join in on my war. It's like whatever's happening in South America doesn't concern you, it should. Uh oh, they're destroyed again. Oh, something just got actually killed. Was that my builder? Did it just kill my builder? Oh, I think it did. Oh, that's so annoying, especially because it's just ruined these tiles again. Oh my god. <laughs> you gotta love the map with a volcano. It's fine. It's fine. Luckily I have a bunch of gold, so this is, this is okay. I don't mind redoing it all, but... Oh, 
painful. I actually have Miss Encampment and Archer set up here though in order to block Brazil's reinforcements which work quite well so that's quite tasty. There's my first C unit which means I'm going to start the game in a golden age. I've got this quadroom room which can come around and, and start to pepper this Brazilian city. 43 strength is quite strong. It's quite a lot. I don't like it being that strong so we're gonna have to see what we can do to get through this city but we should have options, I think. Antonal, we knew that was there, but Sao Paulo, ooh, is in rebellion. That's exciting. I'm gonna see if I can pillage this district and then skedaddle because pikemen, pikemen are very fun units to have, especially because I've got one spearman. 45 strength, a couple of pikemen should do me very nicely actually to try and destroy the Brazilians. Um, I'm just actually getting a bit more gold up front, 277 there, which is pretty cool. Actually, 49 now. Let's do that. So that's 316. I think that means if I just sort of move these guys around a little bit, I can get myself another Spearman. Yeah, there we go. So I can afford a nice Pikeman upgrade on two units now. 83 Science. Wow, that's a big old pillage. Nice. I want to be on the Depredation column because this is one of the best upgrades in the game. So we'll hold that for a second. There are the Cree with 69 Science. <laughs> nice. And Anansai has already been unclaimed by unknown. We are finding very few heroes, actually. Very few heroes. I think there's only 12 city-states in the game. Problem with these, um, this modded map is the city-states just don't load into it very well. So often there can be very few. I turn it up to, like, having as many as I can. It never seems to work, but never mind. Maybe we can, I mean, Heroic Tales, we could just get a new hero and just hope that's enough. I mean, I, I do want one hero. That's the thing. How many boats have we got now? One... Two. Is that it? We've got two boats. No, three. I've got three boats. So, <laughs> I will do one heroic tale. So let's just give it a go. Let's see what we get. Roll the dice. Like Mulan, the twins, Hercules, Hippolyta. Any of these guys would be amazing. Okay, so Brazil have only got one city on the coast. These quadrimes are going to be of minimal use, but I'm glad we've got them. It basically means that we're controlling the coast so they can't be ferrying their units around. And if they can't embark, then it kind of puts me at a bit of an advantage. Evangelizing the belief, I had a bit of uh, spare faith so we can see what we can do. And I think when we've got sacral architecture, which I think overrides um, the thing that would have given me crusade, I think. It's, it's, so yeah, but that's, so we can't get crusade this game, but that's okay because Mapushi's bonus gives me that ability anyway. So let's think about something else to get. Candy, culture and production on these buildings. Um, food and production and the Derasa, that's quite nice. Gold and production. Pagoda is for diplomatic favour per turn. We're going to very quickly fall away from that. The girdle where I just, I love the housing aspect to it. Um, the immunity, if there's still that one as well, the stupa. I think I might get the stupa. I think we're going to do that because the, that, that gives me such a good strong bonus for the rest of the stuff. Looks like Brazil is bringing a trebuchet to an archer party. That's fine, but you know, it's not going to work well for you. Oh, it did just half health hit my encampment though. That's not very kind. I was using that to shoot you. Oh, I was ravaged by natural disaster. Yes, I'd love that. An eight. Oh, that would be amazing. Hang on. Right. So let me just think about this. Is it worth it? Diplomatic favor. I could buy 20 for not much gold at all. Hang on. 78 gold. I'll do that. And then, oh, that was the cheapest deal. Now I only need the 10. Hang on, I need 10 from you. What would it take for that? Oh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money, but we can just pay it up front to pay a little bit less, 90. Okay, good. That's fine. That means we can now put this through. Submit. Yes. I'm going to get one diplomatic favor. That'll give me four when it comes to vote. I need another six. So if I go to like somebody else who's quite cheap to buy it from, Incans, and I just need six from you. Um, hang on five uh six like that what would it take not much okay good and then that means i can vote twice on it i'm hoping that i'll go through oh no i didn't get the plus one ah never mind i didn't get the one vote so that could that could unravel unless it goes through i hope it goes through it did go through uh perfect who voted against it uh the incans boulevard coupe pedro teddy oh actually that means only a few people are in it but that's enough. So I have professional army in place now, 
which is pretty cool. That means I can start to think about upgrading my troops. My spearman is 120 gold to do that. I have no gold in the bank right now, but that's not to say I can't get gold in the bank. I just need to work on shipping it to people who want to buy it. 319 for America just to buy all that up front and then 78. Good. It's 426 in the bank now. That means I can go uh, like this. Pikeman and then this guy, Pikeman. I've got a uh, battering ram on the way and I've got the crossbows on the way too. And then actually this Corsa can get upgraded as well. So let's do that. Lovely. I'm also going to now put my boats in. There's a chance to kill this trebuchet which I'm going to take. Minus 20 loyalty. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, I've got loyal capitals on. I should probably point that on. Um, so capitals can't get flipped in the same way. But now I've got my quad rooms attacking. Now these things are going to get blown to bits probably. But I can do just a little bit of damage to the walls to start with. Uh, 43 damage. Hey, that's not bad. That's not bad actually. We can live with that. Oh, Heroic Tales gave me Arthur which has already been claimed. What's the point in giving me a hero if it's already been claimed? I thought it was supposed to give you one that wasn't cl Ugh, never mind. Well, okay, that just means it's pointless. Um, we won't bother getting that one anymore. What about campuses? Uh, that's a lovely plus four. I think I'm gonna do it. Let's just, let's just get it down, get some science in. Another eruption because these volcanoes have just not stopped erupting all flipping game. Okay, that is now broken, but nothing in my capital actually broke that time. And I didn't lose any population either, so that's quite cool. Right, time to bring in the pikemen now. These guys are pretty flipping tough. So, pikemen in, battering ram forward, catapult on the hill behind. I've got this archer, and this archer just waiting for that beautiful upgrade. And then this courser is going to come in and hopefully do some good. If I just quickly move that one there. Let's pillage this, just give me a bit more science. There's machinery. I think apprenticeship is a good one next, so we'll get that. Um, actually, apprenticeship isn't a good one because I don't have any iron. So let's instead get military engineering. That'll work well. And we've now got bombardment on my two quad rooms, which is pretty cool. So these are doing a little bit more damage to the city now. Are they going to attack the catapult? Normally they attack the catapult out of everything. Yeah, they did. That's actually fine. That's funneling experience into the catapult. I need that leveled up to level two as fast as possible. But that doesn't stop me going quapomp like that. And then quaflump, quaflump. Nice stuff. Battering ram in. Uh, this is still just a regular wall, so that's good. I can go kaplank, and that is the city without walls now. Perfect. That means I can now run my courser in and have a little bit of fun. Well, the Mayans love the idea of getting into war with Brazil. It's always worth doing this every now and then, just checking to see who wants to join in. Nobody's really bothered with Brazil so far, to be fair. But the more people I get in this war, um, the less people will care about war grievances when I start taking and or raising their cities. We go, um, these guys are in now as well. Perfect. So Brazil are now fighting three fronts uh, apart from mine, which is good. Oh, knights are being thrown at Sao Paulo. That is hilarious. Oh, plus three combat strength for all naval units. Yes, I'm just going to burn that guy immediately. Bam. That's wonderful. Okay, cool. That's plus three. It, you know, that just works permanently now on all of my boats, regardless of where they are which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. I haven't got to worry about it. I haven't got to play around with it anymore. Perfect. I can now start to pillage Brazil's stuff behind the scenes as well. This Corsa will get hit a couple of times by the city walls, but hopefully that'll just level it up quickly. But that 690 gold now means I can start getting crossbows. I can start upgrading all of my other units so that I've got a decent battle strength behind the scenes now. The thing I should point out as well is this is all happening without my plus 10 bonus, which is hilarious. So once Brazil go into a golden age, if they do go into a golden age, I mean, that'll be great. Now, what I was going to do, actually, actually, no, if it's got Mapu in it, it's my own built city, isn't it? Oh, great. Well, I don't even need to rename them. I was thinking about, like, making sure I had some sort of really good system so I remembered whose city was whose. But no, actually, this works well. Oh, there was a settler in Rio as well. Nice. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Very excitingly, Brazil are losing the loyalty of Sao Paulo. I haven't got to do anything about that. That's happening automatically. And as soon as it goes to being a free city... I'll have the plus 10 combat strength against it, so I don't need to move my units too quickly in respect of that one. This pikeman has got the level, so it can move forward. Let's just get the battering ram forward as well. I'd rather not get a, a, um, a siege tower just yet. These things are fine as they are. You can see I can now start doing some more pillaging. 
Over the hair just to keep my bank roll going nicely. And this settler, I feel like I'm going to go and settle down to the south. Now, do I want to go and settle? I think that's a volcano in that little tile. Or I can go and settle over on, I think these are the Falklands, aren't they? Which is a Brit. That means I have to go and settle them. It's uh, the only thing I can do in this situation. So let's go and do that. Ten turns until the next era, by the way. Then we'll see who's in a golden age and who can be killed. I mean, Incans, I'm looking at you. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Matthew Wilkinson, Salty Tech, Midnight Oil, Trafford Askby, Paul Coffey, Senjik, and Kroger Brand Trail Mix for all of your support on Patreon. Thank you very much.